You're listening to the National Oceanography Center's Into the Blue podcast, where we tackle some of the biggest questions facing our ocean today by speaking to experts and voices from the world of oceanography. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm Dr. Zoe Jacobs, and today I'm joined by Dr. Socrates Lucaides to discuss the importance of monitoring carbon in our oceans um, and to talk about some of the work that's being done on this at NOC. So welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Nice to be here. So can you start by talking a bit about your background and your career path to NOC? Yeah, so um, I always loved the sea since I was a little boy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I grew up right uh, by the coast in, in Cyprus. So I always knew I wanted to do something with the ocean. So um, after I finished school, I decided to go and study environmental science and marine science, um, which I did. I spent some time in the U.S. Uh, doing that. And then uh, after a, a short time uh, working for the... United Nations in Monaco in Marine Environmental Laboratory. Um, I moved to the Netherlands where I did my PhD mm-hmm. in earth science. After that, uh, postdoc at the University of Southampton, mm-hmm. working with carbon in the ocean, mm-hmm. uh, and eventually um, I got to the role that I am now. Cool. So, how long have you actually been working for NOC then? Uh, I've been working for NOC. Uh, for a bit more than 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. Me too, actually. That's oh, yeah. exciting. <laughs> um, so what is your current role, Lenok? So I'm the head of the analytical science team uh, in the Ocean Technology and Engineering Group. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my roles is to uh, lead uh, the Carbonet sensor development program so one of my my jobs is to develop new technologies new sensors for Mm. measuring carbon in the ocean cool um so yeah i know i know that the um your group ote um are involved in a range of projects that um are based on marine carbon but before we get into these um can you explain why it's so important that we make these observations So we release about 32 billion tons of carbon into uh, the atmosphere every year. Mm. And because of that, the the climate is is warming, the planet is warming. Um, Fortunately for us, about a quarter of that uh, carbon is absorbed by the ocean, Mm -hmm. which slows down a bit the the warming of the planet. Um, However, uh, the absorption of that carbon, the carbon in the ocean... Uh, it has some consequences on on the chemistry of the ocean. Mm. Uh, it makes the ocean more acidic, which can have some uh, consequences on on marine yeah. organisms, marine ecosystems, especially organisms mm. that build uh, their shells and skeletons out of carbonate minerals. Mm. Um, also, uh, the ocean is so important in in regulating how much CO two is in the atmosphere and how much is absorbed by the atmosphere. However, this exchange of carbon dioxide with the atmosphere is not the same uh, in spatial and um, temporal scales. Right. So in order to understand how, how this, um, this process changes in, in spatial and temporal scales, we just need to observe, we just need more and more observations, mm. and also to understand how ecosystems are going to be affected in the future. Yeah, so how important is it that we continue to monitor it, especially with kind of future climate change? It's, it's very important yeah. because we need to understand um, how things are going to change uh, and be able to produce the data that we're going to feed into the models to do our predictions. Mm. Yeah, so incredibly important mm-hmm. to summarise. <laughs> um, so aren't you and your colleagues working on a project at the moment that's um, creating some new technologies uh, to help with this? Yeah, so um, one of the biggest projects we're involved at the moment is called uh, George. George, it's a It's a big uh, multi-million euro project, an EU project with partners all across Europe. Mm -hmm. Um, So most of the observing, ocean observing in Europe uh, falls under what we call um, European research infrastructures. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this project brings together three of the biggest ocean observing infrastructures together in order to increase uh, their ability to measure carbon, uh, the quality and and um, the quality we actually need. So, uh, NOC through this project is responsible for de- for developing um, new technology for measuring 
and monitoring the um, ocean carbon system. Cool. Um, are there lots of people involved in this one from NOC? Uh, so uh, a lot of people in OTE are involved. Yeah. Uh, so almost um, the whole group is involved, okay. engineers and yeah. scientists uh, developing new yeah. uh, chemical methods, but also developing the hardware oh, okay. um, that's going to go into these technologies. Yeah. And where... Where are these observations being made? Is it kind of based on a certain region or is it mostly on the technologies to be used everywhere? So we we just finished our first year of the project and okay. we have four more years yep. uh, to develop the technology. And eventually we're going to um, demonstrate this technology and validate it in uh, the Mediterranean Sea, in the okay. North Atlantic. Yep. Uh, and there are some trials in the Arctic as well. Cool. So it's going to be um, all over, basically yeah. in different conditions, different depths. Yes. That's exciting. Yeah. So what's different about this? So is this brand new technology that's being created? This is going to be brand new technology okay. that is going to enable us to measure carbon in much better uh, measurement quality yeah. than we've been able to do so far. Yeah. Um, hopefully integrated on smaller platforms, uh, a lot of autonomous platforms that... Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to help us to collect much more data with much less effort and carbon footprint. I mean, sounds great overall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice long project then. So you're developing all the technology, get to test it, use it all, and hopefully the results are great. And then yeah. we can start building that into models and things like that, the data. Well, when the technology is uh, when when the technology is proven that yeah. it does, we're supposed to do, yeah. and hopefully will be adapted by this uh, European research infrastructures yeah. by uh, all the ocean observers around yeah. Europe primarily, but then hopefully globally. Yeah. Um, and yeah, should hopefully should enable um, data collection at yeah. a wider scale. Yeah. Wow. Then, yeah. That's really cool. Sounds like a really like, worthwhile project. Amazing. Um, so from working in the marine ecosystems modeling group myself, um, I know that some organisms can have quite a large effect um, on the global carbon cycle. So um, is there a project looking into this in your group? So we're involved in uh, a new project call, called Chalky. Mm -hmm. um, Chalky is a part of a larger uh, program called Biocarbon oh, yeah. uh, that is run by, uh, by NERC. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, so Chuck is looking at coccolithophores mm -hmm. and what is the role of coccolithophores in um, the ocean uh, carbon cycle, mm -hmm. but also in interactions between the atmosphere and the ocean in terms of CO2 fluxes. Just to stop you there, what are coccolithophores? So coccolithophores are, 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 are small uh, macroscopic planktonic okay. organisms. Yeah. So they're plankton. Uh, what, what's special about them is that they produce these uh, scales made out of um, calcium carbonate, okay. mineral. Yeah. Um, they produce these scales and in doing so, uh, they actually acidify the ocean. And they form these blooms, and then when they uh, die because of, of viral infection or because they're out of food, they um, they shed this um, this coccolis, this these scales, and they uh, turn the waters into turquoise color, which oh, right. is so intense you can see it from space sometimes. Mm. So the interesting thing about these organisms is that. We're not 100% sure how they affect CO2 flux from the atmosphere mm -hmm. uh, because they release CO2 when they calcify. They could reduce the amount of CO2 that uh, water can take from the atmosphere. Right, I see. But at the same time, they're you know planktonic photosynthetic organisms, so they um, produce organic matter that could sink and lead to an export of carbon. So... Through this project, we're going to try and see what how these um, organisms during blooms can actually affect uh, CO2, the CO2 cycle mm. and CO2 fluxes from the atmosphere. Cool. So how, how would you actually go about measuring that? So there's going to be a cruise uh, this summer mm -hmm. that is going to go out with a uh, lot of scientists uh, on board. Uh, I have to say the project is led by Harold Watt University mm -hmm. in Scotland. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of measurements on the ship itself, but uh, here at NOC we are responsible for uh, Autosub long-range mission, yeah. which uh, 
is going to depart from Iceland, mm -hmm. uh, going to the Iceland Basin, spent um, about a month there doing surveys alongside the ship, and then we will, it will come and be recovered in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So completely, um, I guess, uh, it will be deployed without the need of, of the ship, mm -hmm. deployed from shore, uh, recovered from shore. It will be at sea for two months, which is the longest yeah. um, mission for their sub long range. And we'll be loaded with some, you know, some of the new technologies we're developing here at NOC for measuring the carbonate system. Cool. Exciting. Yeah. We were talking about that exact mission uh, recently with Stuart. So they, that's exciting. Um, so observing and monitoring carbon is obviously important. Um, and it sounds like uh, the group OTE are heavily involved in advancing this technology. Um, but are you involved in anything to do with uh, CDR, for example? Yes. So um, there's no doubt that um, to uh, slow down climate change, we need to cut down emissions. Yeah. Uh, but there's going to be some parts of our lifestyle that will uh, require fossil fuels to stick around for a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And to achieve net zero, we need to find a way to take that CO2 out. Yeah from the atmosphere in the meantime. So there's a lot of uh, methods for removing CO2 from the atmosphere being suggested. Yeah. Uh, ocean is very attractive uh, option for this because of its vast size. If we just increase the capacity of the ocean to take on CO2 even a little bit, mm -hmm. the potential is, is very large. So a lot of suggestions, a lot of um, ideas for removing CO2 from the atmosphere in the ocean. However, there's no way at the moment, no good ways of um, measuring if the different methods are effective mm -hmm. in doing so. So our role here at NOC and, and in our group is to develop the technologies uh, required to quantify um, how much we can change the carbon system of the ocean how much CO2 we, we take from the atmosphere, but also how safe are these methods for mm. the marine ecosystem. So we're developing what, what we're called monitoring, reporting, and verification okay. systems. And is, it, is there a big project going on at NOC with this? So or? there's a project, EU project at the moment, uh, led by NOC uh, mm -hmm. called CO2 CDR. Mm -hmm. Uh, the project overall looks at um, the ocean CDR aspect from a holistic point of view, okay. uh, from the science to the socioeconomic aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are leading a, a work package here, which looks specifically to uh, monitoring, reporting and verification technologies. Mm -hmm and specifically into the sensing technologies that are going to go on platforms that are going to be used for measuring um, the effectiveness of carbon dioxide removal techniques mm. in the ocean. Cool. And I should just say, thank you for that, CDR is carbon dioxide removal. I broke my <laughs> own rule about using acronyms. <laughs> um, so that sounds really exciting. Can you give kind of a couple of examples of what kinds of new kind of CDR technologies that you're going to be looking at or testing? So, uh, so there's several carbon dioxide removal methods. Yeah. For example, uh, there is um, application of minerals on uh, coastlines mm -hmm. where through um, natural weathering that produce alkalinity. So the technologies we have can measure small changes in alkalinity, okay. for example, yeah. and dissolving organic carbon yeah. and pH. Uh, so we can install these instruments um, in, in application sites and monitor the small changes or the rates of release of alkalinity. Mm -hmm. uh, we combine this, our technologies with off-the-shelf sensors for monitoring the, the ecosystem, um, measuring um, or observing phytoplankton communities to yeah. see if they're affected by, by this uh, application. Um, other methods, uh, carbon dioxide removal methods, uh, involve enhancing biological protection of, mm. um, let's say, kelp forests or sargassum mm. 
uh, algae. Um, again, in cases like this, it's important to measure the changes in the carbon system yeah. in, in the ocean, but also nutrients, what happens to the nutrients if you have too many nutrients that could cause eutrophication somewhere else mm -hmm. or release of dissolved organic matter yeah. or, or, or oxygen. So these are the kind of things we want to be monitoring just to see what the effect of these methods are on yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah, very topical at the moment. So that's an yes, exciting, yes. exciting exactly. project to be involved in. Um, so to finish off, um, what can you tell us about any exciting projects that are coming up over the next few years? What can we expect to hear from OTE? So in OTE, we always uh, trying to push uh, the envelope when it comes to developing um, new technologies for ocean observations. We always try to make things smaller, more effective, more accurate. So there is new funding coming in to um, look at alternative technologies to measure different parameters in the ocean, mm. for example, the carbonate system. Um, but also we're looking into expanding ocean observations in areas or regions of the ocean that traditionally it's been very hard to access, like the Arctic Ocean, for mm. example, under ice locations and areas like that. Yeah. Cool. So stay tuned. Yeah, absolutely will. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. If you're enjoying Into the Blue, please make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. New episodes are released every other Wednesday on all major platforms and are also available to watch on the NOC's YouTube. See you next time.